It's a disease. I'm telling you guys, it is a real disease. And just like the disease of real addiction, there is no known cure. There's treatment. There are ways to diminish the cravings to use. But even after all these decades of research, doctors and psychiatrists trying to figure it out, we still don't have any real answers. There is no known cure for addiction. And unfortunately, for those who are addicted to attention, there's not even 12-step programs to be offered. There are no treatment centers who will happily accept tens of thousands of dollars to not resolve your problem. If you find yourself inflicted with the addiction to attention, you're pretty much on your own. The only cure to the withdrawals, the only cure for those late night sweats and restless legs, the only cure is more attention. And it doesn't matter if that attention is positive or negative. Members of Woke United Methodists like Jamel Hill and Keith Olbermann, the attention they receive most of the time is overwhelmingly negative, at least from normal people. Now, of course... Their pretend friends in the mainstream media, they massage their egos with positive affirmation and some polite ass patting, but who really cares what the mainstream media thinks? Most of them, they are just as miserable and irrelevant as Smelly Jamelli and Keithy Poo. Keithy Poo! Keithy Poo! Last night, the New York Jets season came to an end. Well, KC, that's ludicrous. They won the game in overtime. Their defense is legit. This team is loaded. Yeah. Yeah, the Jets are stacked. They have skilled players at nearly every position except the one position that matters the most, quarterback. After four plays and after one of the best entrances that I've seen to a Monday night football game with Aaron Rodgers draping himself in the American flag, after four plays, Aaron Rodgers' season is over. I feel bad for the dude, but it's kind of ironic when you think about it. The past few years in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers constantly complained about the lack of weapons on offense, but one thing that was always consistent with the Packers they always had a strong offensive line. Aaron Rodgers was always protected. Four plays with the Jets, with the offensive line struggling against the Bills front seven, Aaron Rodgers tears his Achilles. It was an emotional evening for fans of the New York Jets. Yes, yes, they found a way to win the game in overtime, but let's be real here. That method of winning games in the NFL, that is not sustainable. The Jets didn't win that game. Josh Allen, he lost the game. You can't rely on that happening every week for the next 16 weeks. Everyone knows that Zach Wilson is not the answer. If I remember correctly, I think I saw headlines this offseason of Zach Wilson fornicating cougars in his spare time. I mean, that's great for him, dipping his wing in the experienced tang, but fornicating with older women, that does not win games in the NFL. Wins tournaments in the PGA if your name is Eldrick Woods and you choose to identify as Tiger. But I don't see it working for Zachary Wilson in the NFL, but that's okay. That's okay. If you're a fan of the New York Jets, I've got some excellent news for you this morning. There is no reason to be down. There's no reason to feel depressed. Your superhero is stepping in to save the season. I can be your hero, baby. Give me one second to explain. I have an idea that's clever. Kaepernick, give me that O face. <laughs> Fans of the New York Jets, don't you worry. The beautiful face of Smelly Jamelli has come up with a brilliant idea to save your season. This idea is original. There is not one member of the mainstream media who has thought of this idea before. Now, for us normal people, we saw Aaron Rodgers writhing in pain last night, and we felt sympathy for the dude. This fan base of the New York Jets, this fan base just can't seem to catch a break. For the first time in years, they go into the regular season with hopes and expectations, only for those dreams to be destroyed five minutes into the first game of the season. But that's how normal people think. That is not how attention seekers think. Members of Woke United Methodist, they see this season-ending injury to Aaron Rodgers as an opportunity for them to make money. They see this injury as an opportunity to boost their public profile and temporarily cure their attention withdrawal. Jamel Hill took advantage of this opportunity last night and recommended a replacement for Aaron Rodgers. Now, this recommendation... It could only come from someone in desperate need for attention. According to Smelly Jamelli, 
The best replacement for Aaron Rodgers was last seen panhandling on the New Jersey side of the George Washington Bridge. Well, KC, who is this hero? Please reveal their name and preferred gender. <laughs> According to Jamel Hill, the best birthing person to replace Aaron Rodgers is Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick. Check it out for yourself. The white man is out for the season. Woohoo! I have the perfect solution. He lives in New Jersey and can borrow my broom to ride to the stadium. His name rhymes with Kaepernick. Really? Really? Are we doing this again? How many times are we going to go through this same thing? Every time a quarterback goes down in the NFL, some attention-seeking doofus with expired woke welfare uses Colin Kaepernick to boost their impressions and make money on social media. At this point, I wish an NFL team would put Kaepernick on the field for four quarters so we could finally put this to rest. Hell, I don't know if he could even make it through four quarters. He would be lucky to survive the first drive. Now, Smelly Jamelli claims he took a team to the Super Bowl. He would be perfect for the Jets. Yeah, that was like 10 years ago. Joe Fluco took a team to the Super Bowl. He actually won it. Does anyone think Joe Fluco should replace Aaron Rodgers? I guess Jamel Hill forgot what happened when the Raiders gave Colin Kaepernick a tryout last year. How quickly these pesky details seem to be forgotten when there's a narrative to push and attention to be craved. Last spring, the Raiders wasted time and resources by giving Colin Kaepernick a tryout. Now, have you guys ever wondered why we have never seen video footage of this tryout? Some no-name quarterback from Slippery Rock has a pro day throwing the woke wiener around the field. Video footage is released to the public. Colin Kaepernick has a tryout with an NFL team, a tryout that he and his doofus supporters have been begging for years to get, and you mean to tell me not one second of video footage is released to the public? Huh. I wonder why. According to Warren Sapp, the tryout was an absolute disaster. Now, my inside sources tell me they have seen more athletic ability from dump divers processing trash in the WNBA than they saw on the field that day with Colin Kaepernick. At one point, scouts, they asked Kaepernick to hit a receiver on a quick slant. Now, the scouts, they were absolutely mesmerized. They had never seen something like this before. Instead of throwing the ball forward, Colin Kaepernick, he managed to throw the ball backwards. Look, look, look. Jamel Hill is no dummy. She knew exactly what she was doing by mentioning Colin Kaepernick. I challenge you, go through her feed on Twitter. For some reason, there's 1.4 million dumbasses who follow the lead ass on Twitter. Go look at her impressions, though, for the average tweet. 50,000, 60,000, 80,000. Now, that's not paying the bills. That's not keeping the cucumbers stocked in the refrigerator. Cucumbers are unaffordable when Twitter activity is low. Now, you got to remember, Spotify is no longer donating sympathy money to Jamel Hill. Well, Casey, she claims in her bio that she's a podcaster on Spotify. Yeah, yeah, she does. That's a lie. Jamel Hill, she might still be uploading to Spotify, but she ain't getting paid for it. As soon as she tweets about mythical racism or someone like Colin Kaepernick, her Twitter impressions go from 60,000 to over 5 million. The vast majority of the reactions overwhelmingly negative, but Jamel Hill doesn't care about that. Her withdrawals are cured. She is laughing all the way to Publix to exchange those dollars for cucumbers. Smelly Jamelly, though. She was not the only one last night star for attention. Keith Olbermann was also desperate for the attention of lonely men. I guess yesterday was another lonely day for Keithy Poo. Maybe his plethora of cats didn't want to be around him. Familiar situation being rejected by the pussy. But with his abundance of spare time, Keith, he decided to get on Twitter to diagnose this injury to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you didn't know that. Keith Olbermann chooses to identify as a doctor, Dr. Pooh. Dr. Pooh, he was able to easily determine the cause of Aaron Rodgers' injury. It wasn't that 300-pound lineman that fell on his leg. No, 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 no. According to Dr. Pooh, the cause of this injury is much more complex. Check it out for yourself.
I know what caused this injury. It was his failure to vaccinate. One rendezvous with the Fauci would have prevented this from happening. Um, um, let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly. According to Keithy Poo, professional athletes can avoid a torn Achilles by agreeing to be vaccinated? Well, that is fantastic news for NBA players. Normally, a torn Achilles destroys careers in the NBA. Just ask DeMarcus Cousins. But due to the research of Dr. Poo, we can now avoid these career-altering injuries with a simple visit to the Fauci. <laughs> Now, obviously, this is complete bullshit, and Keith Olbermann knows it. He's just doing what he does best, craving attention. Let me tell you how pathetic Keith Olbermann is. In his Twitter bio, this dude constantly updates his viewership numbers across YouTube and podcasting platforms. I am important. I had over 3 million views in August. Well, that's great, Keithy. No one cares. <laughs> you know... Jamel Hill craves attention because she needs the money. Keith Olbermann does not need the money. Keith Olbermann craves attention because he is lonely. There's a reason that he lives with dozens of cats. This dude lives in the largest city in the country. He's been in the media for as long as I've been alive. And I don't think Keith Olbermann has a single friend. Jamel Hill's an attention seeker, but at least she's cognizant. Even though she's wrong most of the time, sometimes I think Jamel Hill actually does it on purpose to get attention. Jamel Hill, like I said, is no dummy, but Keith Olbermann? I think Keith Olbermann is out of his mind. But give me your thoughts. Jamel Hill, Keith Olbermann, once again begging for attention. Like I said, I think Jamel Hill does things like this for financial reasons. I'm not sure she really believes it. Keith Olbermann, though? <sighs> I think Keith Olbermann is delusional enough. I think he actually believes it. I mean, this dude is out of his mind. What do you think? Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.